So if you have more than three mutually exclusive groups, three or more than that, means more than two, then this will become the case of one-way ANOVA. So in case of one-way ANOVA, you have one variable, that is the dependent variable, that is continuous in nature, and another variable, which is the independent variable, that is categorical in nature, and that categories are mutually exclusive of each other, first thing, and second thing is that, that you have more than two categories. Till two categories, you can apply independent t-test. But however, if you have more than two categories, then one way or another. But what if you have more than one independent variable? So as of now, in case of one way or another, we have only one categorical variable or one grouping variable, I will say, into three or more groups. But what if the case is that you have more than one categorical variable, two or more than that? Are you getting the statement that the independent variable in case of one way ANOVA was only one divided into two or more categories? But now I'm talking of a different situation where I'm saying that you have one more categorical variable which is divided into two categories or three categories or more. Then this will be the case of two-way ANOVA. One way ANOVA can't be performed in this case. So let's say you want to test the uh, uh, let's say you have given uh, this uh, one exam to the undergraduate student and the postgraduate student or in the undergraduate student, the first year student, second year and third year. So one this is one grouping variable. Second, you want to test them, their scores when they attended online examination and offline examination. Again, you are having a second cate categorical variable. Then this will case, make the case of two way or one. Or let's say you want to test or you want to know what is the mean difference of test grades between left and right handed students in faculty X and faculty Y and faculty Z classes, right? Or what is the mean difference in total output of factories defined by location as well as industry? Again, you have two categorical variables, different locations and different industries. Or you want to know what is the mean difference in performance for four different training programs and each performed at four different locations and also combination of this. Then this will again be a case of two way ANOVA. Are you getting the problem? Please be interactive. Are you getting the problem? What I'm trying to say? Yes, sir. In this case, you are having more than one independent variable. However, the independent variable will remain the categorical only. So how to perform that? I'll just share my screen. Please have the Jamovi open with you. And I will use the data set. Yesterday we have used that data set on tooth growth. So open and from data library, you will find this tooth growth data set. Here started we have performed one way ANOVA while we wanted to know is there any significant difference of or whether there is a significant effect of different doses. So again I will explain this data set. This is the tooth length which is a metric variable measured in millimeters. This is the supplement type. It is categorical, two type of supplement given, one in the form of directly vitamin C tablets and another in the form of orange juice. Orange juice also contains vitamin C. Only thing is here we are giving directly vitamin C tablets and here orange juice. So this makes it a case of independent t-test if you want to test the effect of supplements on two length, different type of supplements because it is only two categories. 
if you want to test the effect of dose, dose is in the form of 500 mg, 1000 mg and 2000 mg on tooth length. Again, in this case, our category is 3 and mutually exclusive. So, this will make it a case of one way and over. But what if I want to know what is the effect of different type of doses, different levels of doses on tooth length in presence of two different kind of supplements. Means if I am giving 500 mg with, with 500 mg of vitamin C, then what is the effect? If I am giving 500 mg with orange juice, then what is the effect? Again, 1000 mg with vitamin C, 1000 mg with orange juice, 2000 mg with vitamin C, 2000 mg with orange juice, orange juice given with 2000 mg. What is the effect on tooth length? So overall, I am trying to measure the effect of different type of supplements and different doses on tooth length whether they are statistically different or they are the same. The effect on the tooth length or tooth growth is same or different. Are you getting the problem statement? Yes, yes. So, if we don't have this variable, only dose and length, this is the case of one and over, but again, you have another categorical variable. Somebody is joining. Yeah. So here you are having two categorical variables. So one thing you should remember that one of the categorical variable for performing ANOVA needs to be more than in more than two categories. But another variable can be two categories, three categories, but minimum requirement is two categories. Even two categories is there, then also it's okay. But one of the main variables should be. Uh, minimum three for performing ANOVA. However, due to the presence of another variable, we are performing one way ANOVA, uh, sorry, two way ANOVA. So we will see the effect of different doses and supplements together on tooth growth. So it will give you three comparisons. First, different kind of dose and their effect on length, then different kind of supplements and their effect on tooth length, and combined effect. This is known as interaction effect. Means when these are combinedly given, then what will be the effect? So click on ANOVA and simply if you click this ANOVA, it is an option of two, it will give you an option of two way ANOVA. So our dependent variable was length of the tooth and fixed factors or independent variable are supplement and dose both. Okay. Now you can see from ANOVA that different type of supplements this is the case of two way ANOVA. Different kind of supplements, that is vitamin C and orange juice, have a significant difference, a significant effect on tooth growth. And if you could remember, I'll, I'll, I'll show you again, forget about it. When we have done one independent T test, then we have found only for the uh, supplement we found there exists no significant difference. If I test for independent test on the same data set, so length and only supplement if I am taking independent t test. Here p value is more than 0 0.05. Means the supplements two type of supplement that is orange juice and vitamin C does not have significant difference in their effect on tooth length. But if you perform this two way ANOVA, you will find that now if you see this table, 
supplement have significantly difference. Why? Because now there is another factor present that is dose. Due to this effect, now they are having a significant difference in their effect on tooth length. Similarly, different doses also have different effect, significant difference in their effect on tooth length. And when combinedly given, see, means this means it is an interaction term. When combinedly given, then also they are showing significant effect. So you can say from this table, if you have two or more categorical variables and one metric variable, simply you can say that to test this, we have performed a two-way ANOVA. And in that two-way ANOVA, we found that supplement also, the two types of supplement that we have taken has a significant effect in their uh, have a significant difference in their effect on tooth growth different doses also have a significant effect significant difference in their effect on tooth growth and combinedly when given means different doses with different supplements this is known as the interaction effect then their interaction effect also shows significant difference now, okay now this uh, uh, in case of two-way ANOVA, as already I have told you that uh, effect size we measure through coherence D. But in case of two-way ANOVA, we calculate through partial eta square. So if you click on this partial eta square, it will give you the effect size. So when supplement was given alone, it, there was a significant uh, difference in its effect and that effect in the population if you calculate that stands to a level of 22.4 percent so whatever test you are applying in your sample it in the overall population it will have effect to a level of 22.4 percent only not on the entire population but those will have the effect will show the effect on 77.3 percent of the population and this interaction effect will have its effect on 13.2 percent of the population so this is their effect size then also we want to check the post hoc test here two ANOVA tells that they differ in their effect but which of the group differs that you can note by, by while taking all three through post hoc analysis again i have told that here you have to take Tuki as in ANOVA for ANOVA we use Tuki method for knowing the significant difference so if you see this you will find that orange juice and uh, this vitamin C they differ from each other means they have a different effect on the tooth growth then you will also get the dose effect of dose also and this you can see that 500 mg when compared to 1000 mg and 2000 mg in both cases it is different and 1000 mg when compared with 2000 mg again it shows significant difference so all different doses also show different effect because this you can know only through multiple comparisons here you can only know that yes there is a different type of uh, these doses have different effect different type of supplement have different effect and the combined effect is also different but only this is the table multiple comparison that will tell you that actually which of the group differs so from here it is very clear that uh, orange juice will show a different effect vitamin c capsules uh, tablets will show a different effect then different doses 5000 mg 1000 mg 2000 mg will also show a different effect and when combinedly given, then you can see 500 
mg when given with orange juice and 500 mg when given with vitamin c you can see p is less than 0 0.05 significant effect is there then 1000 mg when given when 1000 mg of orange juice was given there is no significant difference when 1000 mg of vitamin c was given means 1000 mg of orange juice were compared with 1000 mg of a uh, 2000 mg of orange juice no significant difference 1000 mg of vitamin c compared with 500 mg of vitamin c there is a significant difference then 1000 mg that with 1000 mg you need not to compare so you'll find that there is there is no there is only significant difference here you can see that 5000 uh, mg of orange juice differs from 1000 mg of orange juice when combinedly given means you are giving the supplement in form of orange juice in 500 mg 1000 mg in 2000 mg when com you are comparing 500 500 mg of orange juice with 1000 mg and 2000 mg of orange juice you are finding a significant difference right but when you are comparing vitamin C, 500 mg of vitamin C with 100 mg of vitamin C, there exists no significant difference. Okay. And, how, and 500 mg of vitamin C with 2000 mg of vitamin C shows a significant difference. Only, so you can say that when orange juice is given in different doses form they differ significantly however vitamin c only differs in case of 500 mg and 1000 mg no uh, yeah no uh, 500 mg of vitamin c only differs in case of 2000 mg and 500 mg there is no significant difference between 1000 mg and 500 mg of vitamin c similarly you can see other tables and calculate which one is the, the which one is different if i have the let me check whether i am getting the option to the model already we have taken now we will test the assumptions so since it is two and over so homogeneity test and normality test has to be done By default, this 2 ANOVA is based on the third type of sum of squares. So, homogeneity of variance is there. We have got 0 0.103, which is greater than 0 0.05. And normality test, if I check. So, homogeneity of variance and normal. So, homogeneity of variance is there because the p value is greater than 0 0.05 here also p value is greater than 0 0.05 so normality is also there so the, all the assumptions are met we have performed two-way ANOVA two-way ANOVA told that different type of supplements those and when they are combined together all show significant difference then on further analysis through post hoc comparisons multiple comparison what we call we found that different type of supplements and different type of doses show a different effect on food growth then when we have done the post hoc analysis of the combined dose plus supplement then we found that orange juice at all dose level has different effect on food growth vitamin c only shows significant difference in case of 500 mg and 2000 mg the, if you see all the tables, you'll find almost the same results. Okay. So this table will tell you about the com when combined you have given them whether there is a significant difference or not. So this is the case of two year more. Is this clear? Or do you need me to explain it 
Again. It's clear. It's clear. So should I move on to the next? So Sapanji, you can do one thing since you have joined after two days. So you can go through the recording of one way ANOVA and then if you have any queries, you can get to me at, at any point. I, I didn't get the file of yesterday. Only so, I have the uh, only I have four files from day one. I don't have any files from day two. Data sir, files. Sir, yesterday we didn't get on any new data. This is the data that is already available as a sample in uh, this uh, uh, Jamovi itself. If you go to open and click on data library, you will get these data. Yesterday okay. and today we are doing on the same data. Big file, okay. Anderson, Bucks, Tooth Growth. All these data are there only. If you click, click you will okay, get it. Okay, the tooth growth data is already there. Okay. Uh, it is actually, uh, it comes as a sample in sample data in uh, this Jamovi. Mm -hmm. So you can get it directly from here. Simply click on open and then data library. You will get it. Okay, I, I got it. Data library tooth growth. Yeah. Yeah, you will get it for your practice. Now I am going to share one data for two days. Two day, uh, Three, four data sets in the same drive you can download it and uh, i'll name it just give me a minute i'll update, upload the, those files and you can download so that we can move on to correlations i was stuck in the meeting that's why it didn't happen otherwise i have done it in advance So I've shared the data set. Uh, you can download it using the same link. And I'm also posting the link in the chat. So for today, I have uh, uploaded the data set for today and tomorrow, both. For today, you can download a data set named as, if you go to the folder, I'm, I'm naming the data set, uh, exam anxiety. SAV and uh, uh, the biggest liar dot SAV. Two files. Please download it and let me know once you are done with it. Take some anxiety and which one is the other file? The biggest liar.
Do the people download it? Can you see the file? There it is. I have a yes, sir. It is there. Okay. So for today, you can download this exam anxiety and the biggest liar. For tomorrow, for one another correlation and regression also, you can download the pbcore.sav and album sales for tomorrow. But for today, only just download exam anxiety and the biggest liar. And confirm me once done. Yes, it's done. Oh. Now we will move on to correlations. Now basically correlation is testing of associations between two or more variables. And it is based on the covariance. So I'll just repeat for you what is variance and what is covariance. We all know that the basic F or the center of any of the statistical tests is the its central tendency, particularly mean. So if you have taken 100 samples and calculated their mean, this is the mean of the overall observations. But every individual value will vary from its mean value. It will not be exactly the mean value. That is known as variance. And when you are measuring this variance, simultaneously in two or more variables, then this is known as covariance. So when we try to measure the, the, the change happening from the mean value between two or more variables simultaneously, this is known as covariance and measurement of this covariance is known as correlation. So simply you can say the standardized form of correlation, uh, sorry, of covariance is correlation. Uh, let's take one small example and this correlation ranges from minus 1 to plus 1 or minus 100% to plus 100%. Here the minus and plus sign are not the indicators of the strength, rather they are indicators of the direction. So minus 0.8 is equally strong as plus 0.8. Only thing is minus 0.8 shows negative correlation and plus 0.8 shows positive correlation. In between there will be zero which, which tells you that there is no correlation. Normally this correlation if it is from 0 to 25 percent is considered as weak correlation. If it ranges from 25 to 50 percent we call it as moderate correlation. If it ranges from 50 to 75 percent, we call it as strong correlation, and above 75 percent, we call it as that it is very high correlation. So let's say that in my room there is an air conditioner, not the old one air conditioner, which has a knob. If I increase the knob of that air conditioner, what will happen to the temperature in my room? It will increase or decrease? If I increase the knob of the from point to, from first point to second or third point of the air conditioner, will the temperature in the room drop or will it increase? It will drop. Yep. It will drop. So we are measuring two variances. First variance is the change happening in the knob. Second variance is the change happening in the room temperature. So I'm trying to understand what is the relationship between these two. So it is telling me that it is causing a change. The change in the knob value is 
bringing a change in the room temperature it is decreasing so first thing relationship is there or not it is telling you there is relationship and this is a negative relationship so negative correlation as the knob increase value of knob increases the value of temperature decreases this is a negative correlation let's take another example of a blower room blower if the knob value is increased the temperature value will also increase isn't it if the knob value is increasing the temperature of the room will also increase if it is a room blower again there is a change yeah. happen there is a change happening but this is a positive correlation and both correlations are equally strong only minus and plus sign tells that first one was a negative correlation second one was a positive correlation normally we study correlation by pearson and spearman however there are five points five types of correlations particularly they are divided into bivariate and partial then bivariate is again divided into four three types first one is the pearson correlation also known as product moment correlation pearson correlation is applied when both of your variables between whom you are trying to measure the relationship they are continuous in nature means taken on a interval scale or a ratio scale continuous or metric then we will apply, and in that case if you have to check the correlations then it will be the you will perform pearson correlation which is also known as pearson product moment correlation that is its full name if one of the variable any one of the variable is categorical and that too in categorical it is ordinal ranked then we will use spearman which is the non parametric correlation spearman correlation also known as icc or inter class correlation but spearman correlation is only applied when every rank is different when many ranks are tied then it will be the case. then the best test for that will be kendall tau let's take example let's say people are running into a marathon so one will come first second will come somebody will come second somebody will come third fourth and so on every individual has a different rank the ranks are not tied so if the ranks are not tied there is spearman correlation if the ranks are tied let's say that in a competitive exam many students getting the same marks so five students came first in the merit list three students came second now the ranks are tied okay so if the ranks are tied then the best test is kendall's tau rather than spearman in both the cases see remember we are taking ranks which are ordinal in nature but if the ranks are different for each and every individual then spearman if ranks are tied then kendall tau is this point clear yes okay if any one of the variable rather than categorical and please remember only any one i am saying not all means that means at least one of the variable should be continuous and if the other are ordinal then spearman or kendall tau similarly if one of them is see for pearson both variables should be continuous for spearman one can be continuous other can be categorical and that too in categorical it should be ordinal rank in kendall tau also the same situation will be there only difference between kendall tau and spearman is that that in kendall tau correlation if many ranks are tied means many individuals getting the same rank then you will perform kendall tau if every individual is having an individual rank 
then sphere map or interclass correlation. Now, this is about ordinal. What if one of the variable is dichotomous or nominal? That too, in nominal, it is dichotomous, like male, female, yes, no. In that case, we apply either biserial or point biserial correlation. Now, when to apply biserial and when to apply point biserial? See, this dichotomy is also of two types. One is a discrete dichotomy and another one is a continuous dichotomy. Discrete dichotomy is a dichotomy where both the dichotomies are complete different ends. There is no continuum in them. Like living and dead. There is nothing called half dead. Normally we say a person in coma to be half dead, but till his respiration is going on, he is living actually. That means completely dead. This is the discrete dichotomy. Male, female, unless there is a continuum transgender, if you have only two categories, it will be, and these two are completely according to each other. This is again a case of discrete dichotomy. Yes, no. There can't be a partial yes and partial no. Yes and no. Again, these are the discrete dichotomies. Then what is continuous dichotomy? If you have some con connecting point between the two ends, like pass and fail, some people will pass with marginal mass. Let's say the passing mark is 40. So somebody who got 40 is belongs to the category of pass. Somebody who got 39 belongs to the category of fail. There is a continuum between them. Means the people failing are failing pass with marginal marks, only one mark. A person who is passing is passing with a marginal mark, one mark. There is a continuum connecting link between them. They are not complete opposite ends. In that case, that is the case of continuous dichotomy. Now, you will find most of the cases are of discrete dichotomy, continuous dichotomy exist very rare. So if there is a continuous dichotomy, then by serial correlation. And if there is a discrete dichotomy, then point by serial correlation. So discrete dichotomy cases you will find mostly. So most of the time we apply point by serial correlation. But if there is a part, if we see that there is some continuous dichotomy, then we will apply by serial correlation. Because this point is clear or not, because it's very confusing, the dichotomy part. Is this clear? Yes, sir. The difference between dichotomy means we are saying dichotomous. That means the variable is divided into two nominal categories. Again, in that I am saying a continuous dichotomy means there is some continuum between both the categories, some connecting link. Then that is the case of continuous dichotomy, which exists very rarely. That in that case, we will apply by serial correlation. Any one of the variable I am talking about, another has to be continuous. If both are categorical, then we don't apply this correlation. We apply chi-square test of relationship or chi-square test of goodness of fit and chi-square test of relation. That is completely non-parameter correlation. But here I am saying one of the variable is dichotomous. Then we have to choose by serial or point by serial. If there is a continuous dichotomy, then by serial. If there is a discrete dichotomy, which is mostly found in the population, then point by serial. Third one is the last one, the fifth one is the partial correlation. So let's say I have taken one liter of water and put it on a gas stove. If I increase the knob of the gas stove, time taken by the water will decrease or increase. If I increase the knob, of the gas stove means if I am increasing the flame, 
will the point time taken for water to boil will increase or decrease decrease it will decrease but will this happen in all cases let's say when i am keeping the knob to maximum then time taken by when i'm keeping the knob to the first point means at medium uh, at low flame time taken for one liter of water to boil is let's say two minutes but when i increase this to high flame the time taken by water to boil comes down to let's say 30 seconds up that's hypothetical let's say if uh, on low flame time taken by water to and please remember it's one liter water time taken by one liter of water was five minutes and when i move increase the flame to uh, highest that is four or five then time taken by the water decreases to two minutes so this is a negative correlation this change is happening but will this time taken will be in will be the same in all the cases if i take one liter of ice cold water will it will the time taken by the water to boil if i put if i increase the knob from uh, low flame to high flame will it be the same two minutes Can I have the answer? Are you getting my question? When I took one liter of water and I put it on the gas stove and I increased the flame from low to high, the time taken for the water to boil decreased from five minutes to two minutes. Will this be consistent in all the cases? If I put one liter of ice cold water, still will the time taken by the water to boil will be the same? Will it decrease by three minutes? No, sir. Oh, no, it will be different. It will be different. If I take two liter or five liter of water, again it will be different. Right? Yes, sir. So this factor, the volume of the water and initial temperature of the water, is affecting this relationship so we need to control these factors so if we are controlling these factors if you are performing correlations between our variable you are taking two variables where you want to know the relationship between two variables without any third variable which is present without that variable disturbing this relationship you want to make that variable as constant or you want to make that variable as control, this will become the case of partial correlation. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Like we want to see effect of a statistics class on a student's understanding of statistics. But this effect will be again affected by some other latent variables like the IQ level of the student. So the correlation that we will get will not be exactly correct because we are trying only to map the relationship between the class, number of classes of statistics given to the student and their understanding which can be measured through an examination, examination at the end. But this relationship will always be spurious in nature because there is a every student will be having a IQ also different IQ that will affect their uh, understanding. So we want to have a control on that factor means we will take all students of same IQ level then only we can measure this correlation. This will become the case of partial correlation. Is this clear? Yes. Any confusion in this? So this is the scatter plot and this is showing, uh, first one is showing a negative correlation. Initially, you can understand a correlation visualize, through visualization through scatter plots. 
So this one, the second one is R is equal to 0 0.00, no correlation at all. And this is 0 0.90 positive correlation, means that as V1 increases, V2 also increases. Here, as V1 increases, V2 decreases in the first case. In second case, there is no effect of V1 on V2, there is no relationship. So this is the case of no correlation, positive correlation and negative correlation. And positive and negative correlation are equally strong. So let's do it. And this is all based on covariances. Please remember that. So if you want to clean this output table, select right click and from all Click on all, remove. This will be clear. And if you want to remove this data, delete variables. Okay. From here, it will get deleted. Now, file. Now, the data which I have given to you is in the form of a SAV file. Open will only open files of jamovi.omv files. But here we have SAV files. That's also what I have told the beauty of the software. It supports almost all file types. Through import, you can open Excel file, you can open CSV file, you can open SPSS file, you can open Stata file. So I have given you the SPSS file, dot .sav. So click on import and from here you will get a browse and you can open the data wherever you have saved it. And I want you to open this data set examanxiety.sav. Once you are up with this data, please let me know. Done? Yes, sir. Opened. Okay. We are particularly interested in these three variables. Number of time a student revises his course, then their exam score and their anxiety score. If you see these three, these three are continuous variables. And we want to know the relationship between these variables. Since all are continuous, so we will perform Pearson correlation. So first we need to see initial insights of this data, that how this, these data are related to each other through visualization, that is scatter plot. So click on exploration. Here you will get on a scatter plot. Take exam score on x-axis and revise on y-axis. You will get a scatter plot, put a, it on a linear equation or make a diagonal line on it by clicking this. What does this relationship tell you? It's a positive correlation. Positive. There is a positive correlation means as the students revises more and more, their exam performance increases. Isn't it? Yes, sir. As the students revises, here I have done one thing wrong. Let me put it revised on x axis because we want to measure the effect of revision on exam. Okay. Now you see it. As the students revises more and more, the exam performance increases. Correct? Is it correct? Positive correlation is there between revision and exam. As the students revises more and more, their exam performance increases. Tell me yes or no.
Is this clear? Is this point yes, clear? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Now remove this revised because the revision and exam we have seen. Now see anxiety on exam. What does this relationship tell you? As anxiety increases, the exam performance decreases. There is a negative correlation. Isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay. Now let's, this is a visualization. Now let's do the, actually, what is the value of that correlation? How much this relationship is positive or negative? We want to know the magnitude also, direction we have known. Then you can click on here. There is no option written for correlation alone, simply on analysis regression. Here you will find correlation. Okay. You select this correlation. And if you want to take a revision and exam separately, and then exam and anxiety, you can do this correlation in two steps or in one step also you can do. Revision, exam, and that in one step also you can do. And here, if you want more clarity, you can click flat significant correlations. So it will mark significant correlations with asterisk. Now, if you see the relationship between exam and revision. There is a positive correlation. Yes, sir. And it is a moderate positive because the correlation coefficient is 0 0.397 means 39.7. Right? So if revision time is increased by 100% or one more time, exam performance will increase by 39.7%. And this relationship is significant also because P is less than 0 0.05. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, anxiety is negatively related to revision. Means the more and more the students revise, anxiety decreases. And this anxiety decreases to a level of, means one unit change of revision brings down the anxiety to a level of 70.9%. There is a strong correlation between revision and anxiety. Again, there is a negative correlation between, uh, sorry, uh, there is a negative, strong negative correlation between revision and anxiety. And there is a, for, there is a, moderate negative correlation between ex between the exam and anxiety is this clear and both are significant so what does it tells you that if revision is increased by one unit exam decreases by exam performance increases by 0.397 units or if revision is increased by 100% exam performance will increase by 39.7% and this is significant. If revision time is increased by 100%, anxiety will decrease by 70.9%. Again, it is significant. And if anxiety is decreasing, then exam performance will increase by 44.1%. So the overall relationship that you can say that revision has a negative effect on anxiety, which in turn have a positive effect on or have a negative effect on exam. So more and more the student revise, their anxiety goes down and their exam performance increases. So revision, more and more the student revise, their anxiety goes down to a level of 70.9%. And in turn, the exam performance increases to a level of 44.1%. When anxiety is also a factor. If you are directly measuring the relationship between revision and exam, so this tells you that if students revise by 100%, their performance, their exam performance will increase by 39.7%. In the presence of anxiety, that will improve to a level of 44.1%. 
so we will see while controlling for anxiety also tomorrow my will be so let me first complete this spearman and here so is this clear is this point clear yes sir if you want to plot it you can select the correlation matrix also see all at once you are getting if you see there is a positive correlation between revision and exam there is a negative correlation between exam score and anxiety and there is a negative correlation between the revision time and anxiety all at once you can plot it this scatter plot that we have made there the same plot you will get through this okay this is the case of pearson correlation and why we have met Pearson correlation? Because all our variables are metric or continuous. Is this clear? Yes, sir. So, what does the gray area signify? What? In the in the plot, there is uh, yeah yeah. This is a standard error. told no, it's the error. standard it's standard error. Okay. No, no, it's not a standard error, it's standard deviation. Okay. Is it standard deviation or, or confidence interval? No, sir. It is standard deviation. Because this is the mean. This is the mean. Okay. This line is actually the mean point. How much the data are different are different are scattered from this? That is the standard deviation. Okay, sir. If you see this descriptive, if you may, of any data. Uh, and if you click on plots, no, uh, if you make this scatter plot, so, yes, it's a standard error actually. It gives you the option of plotting the standard errors, how they are distributed. So if you make, oh, okay, sir. if you make this, let's say revision and exam, the scatter plot. So this you got, then you click on linear, this relationship you got. If you want to see how errors are distributed, then you can click on the standard error, the same graph you will get. That you are getting three graphs in one. This is one separate graph. So this tells you about the standard error. Oh, okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. How errors are distributed. Because in a linear relationship, we also test for the errors. So we have done this correlation between a revision exam and anxiety if you do separately then also you see 0.397 and the same value you will get we have done at once and if you again do it want to do it separately between anxiety and exam you will get this value a negative moderate correlation and if you want to check the relationship between revision and anxiety, again you will get 0 0.7, 0 0.709, 70.9% strong negative correlation. And if you want, you can do all at once. Okay, this was the overall value that we are, we are getting. And if you want to check whether they are significant or not, this value will tell, but with the help of this flag significant correlation from the table easily you can find out because it will mark them with asterisk correlation matrix will make a plot of this relationship if you select now the same thing you will be getting so this is how we do pearson correlation Now the second situation is I am telling that one of the data is metric, another data is ordinal ranked. So which of the test we will apply? If one of the data is metric and another variable is one of our variable is metric, another variable is ordinal. Is Pearman correlation correct? So Spearman correlation. Ah, uh, Spearman. That's what I'm saying. So let's take another data set. Let's first clean this entire thing.
remove all this or open in the file import please open the file the biggest liar.sv okay first i have to remove this one then only the previous one You will get three variables. As of now, we are interested in these two variables. Creativity and position. Once you are up with the data, please let me know. So that I can explain this data set, what this data set is all about. Sir, opened. Okay. So what I did, I wanted, I had an assumption that those who are highly creative, they have, they are better liars. They are able to tell better stories. Okay. So first understand the problem. I have an assumption that there is some relationship between the creativity and Telling lie means people are if people are more creative, then they will be able to tell better lies. So for that, I held a con contest. The contest is known as the biggest liar, where people were given one test to measure their creativity scores, and based on their creativity scores they were ranked first second third fourth in this competition means the person who got first he is better he is the best liar the person who got second is second best then third fourth and so on means based on the creativity we have given them a position in the competition so again i am repeating the assumption is that the hypothesis is that more creative people are better liars. Now, how to check this? They have been given a test, and this test was meant to measure their creativity score. Based on their creativity score, they were ranked in the competition as first, second, third, fourth, so on. Right? Now I want to see the relationship between now you see this position. In the competition is ordinary rank, ordinal rank, and this is the continuous data, their, their creativity score. I want to check whether they whether more creative people are better liars or not. So in that case, since one is ordinal, I will perform a Spearman uh, correlation or interclass correlation. So from regression. I will select the same correlation matrix, creativity, position, and here rather than Pearson, I will select Spearman. Spearman, like Pearson correlation, is represented by R. This is represented by RHO. We call it as Spearman row. Now tell me what is the correlation between creativity and position there is a negative ne correlation negative correlation means if a person is more creative his rank in the in the uh, competition is the value of the rank is decreasing right yes sir means if his creativity score has increased he has moved from position 3 to position 2 or position 1. Correct? The yes. score of the position, I am not saying the position, the score of the position is decreasing. Means the number is decreasing because we are taking numbers, creativity and position. So if creativity increases, their position decreases, means position decreases, means from third position 
they get to second position or first position or from fifth position to fourth position third position and so on as creativity score increases are you getting this yes sir so i am not saying that there means if i am saying that uh, if creativity increases their position decreases i am not saying in terms of their position in the contest i am saying the number and if number is decreasing means the number of in the position is decreasing means from fifth to fourth to third that is the decreasing so if a person is first in the competition is he a better liar or not yes sir okay so from here we can understand that if a creativity increases then the person's rank order decreases and if the rank order decreases means moving from 3 to 2 to 1 means he has a better chance to win the competition means he is a better liar if creativity increases the chances of person uh, coming first or second or third means in the competition also increases and this tells that he is the better liar so this uh, relationship between creativity and liar means more creative a person is he is a better liar that is resembled by his position in the competition and if position decreases means from 10th to 4th to 3rd to 2nd to 1st like this as creativity increases is this clear any any confusion no sir it is clear okay no, no, normally uh, people confuse that how position decreasing means position uh, number are decreasing. That means his uh, rank in the uh, uh, this position number is decreasing means his uh, rank is improving actually. So more creative person has high chance of winning this competition or turn out to be a biggest liar. Clear? Yes, sir. Now here is one problem. I have done Spearman correlation, but let's see one thing. Many people are getting the first rank. Right? Many people are getting first rank. Many people are getting second rank, third rank, based on the creativity score range. Isn't it? Can you see it in the data? Yes, sir. We can see that. Now many ranks are tied. So rather than Pearson, rather than Spearman correlation, which correlation, if every individual might be having different ranks, we have 68 individuals, and if they would be having 68 ranks, then we can say that uh, we should perform a Spearman correlation. Since many ranks are tied, then which test will be better? Kendall Tau. Kendall Tau. So you go to this regression again correlation, you select your data and here you will select Kendall Tau because this is more justified for this. Now you see, when you perform Kendall Tau, you got a 30% which is a moderate, here also there was moderate correlation and this tells that if a person creativity increases, his by 100% his position decreases by 37.3%. Here it is decreasing by 30%. Results will be the same, only this correlation coefficient will slightly differ. But this test is justified when many ranks are tied. Kendall Tau. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, we will be continuing with the other two kinds of correlations tomorrow and regression. So, till now, whatever I have been discussed, if it's okay to you, fine. If you have any confusion.